Hey everybody, it's Allie, the canine nutritionist from Padfoot Palms, and I'm here with Velocity, my standard poodle puppy. It's very early in the morning, and we had some pretty serious storms last night, so she is waking up a little bit later than usual. Come here, don't go off the bed. Good girl. <laughs> anyway, so, well, all right, just plop down in your bed then. She's so silly. Anyway, she's being extremely good this morning, so I was going to see if I could get in a, um, a kibble review. Come here. Good girl. Yes. Good girl. So, let's see if she will sit with me long enough to take a look at some kibble and look at the ingredients. Um, as always, if you are looking for um, a complete list of problematic ingredients, I have them in the files section of the Padfoot Palms Facebook group. So make sure that you join and check that out. Um, there's lots of other great information in there as well. Okay, she wants to go play. So I'm going to put her on the floor and we'll take a look at some food. Okay, so um, per usual, I am on Chewy.com so that I can have quick access to the ingredients list. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Okay, so this is the Wellness Complete Health Whitefish and Sweet Potato Recipe. So let's take a look at the ingredients. So we've got whitefish, okay, that's good. Ground barley, okay, by itself, that would be good. Um, <clears throat> but unfortunately, it's, it's going to be with a couple of other red flag ingredients. So in this case, it's actually gonna go into the not good category. Um, but if it was just white fish, ground barley, fish meal, it, you know, and then it went into, um, you know, flaxseed and, and then listing off fruits and vegetables and things like that, then it would be, um, it would be considered a good food. So, um, back to the barley. So after barley, we've got peas, okay? I do not recommend foods with peas, beans, legumes. Um, for those of you who are following the, um, the latest research with DCM, which is dilated cardiomyopathy, it's a heart condition. It is potentially related to the blockage of taurine, Right? They think that the legumes are um, keeping the body from absorbing taurine, which comes from meat. So, um, right now, the research is inconclusive. And so, until they absolutely nail it down and figure it out, I just recommend that you avoid it. All legumes, peas, beans, garbanzo beans, all of it. Just don't, don't even feed it. Okay, and then we've got a fish meal, which, you know, is not as good as a whole fish, but it's fine. Then we've got oatmeal, sweet potato. Okay, so now we're really compounding the carbs that we've got in this food. Again, if you're, if you're trying to find a food that's healthy for your dog, it's okay if it has one carb or one grain. It's when they start adding multiples that it becomes a problem because it increases the carbs that are in the pet food, right? The higher the carbs, the more likely the dog is to gain weight, the less likely they are to lose weight. Um, they're gonna get hungry a lot faster, right? For any of you who have ever been on a, uh, a low carb diet, like Atkins or something like that, you will see that you are ravenously hungry, you know, 
very shortly after eating, and that's because your body burns off those carbs very quickly, and, and dogs do something very similar. So um, you really just wanna keep it to one carb or one grain, um, and we've already got multiples here in this food. So we've got the oatmeal, we've got the sweet potatoes, canola oil, eh, I mean, we, we could really do better than that. I would rather see that be, um, you know, a flaxseed oil. Of course, they've got flaxseed in here, um, but there, there are numerous other oils that would be a higher quality than a canola oil. Tomato pumice, this is kind of like a throwaway ingredient. Um, it, it's not really doing anything for your dog. They're more so using it for binder and color and because it's cheap, right? It's leftover tomato parts uh, from processing for canned tomatoes and, and stewed tomatoes and things of that nature. Um, which you'll find a lot of in dog food. It's it's a lot of human waste products that are then being turned into dog food. Ground flaxseed, great. Natural fish flavor. So for those of you who are familiar with my reviews, you know that I do not like anything and do not recommend anything that has any kind of flavoring. Um, flavor is a loophole term that is used to uh, encompass all sorts of chemicals and enticers to try to trick your dog into feeding the food um, or eating the food, I should say. Sorry, it's still early. Um, so I, I do not recommend anything with flavor. Also the word natural, please don't be fooled by that because that is not uh, a regulated term. So uh, they can say that anything is natural. Fish is natural because it, you know, comes from the environment and the ocean and therefore it's natural, right? I mean, it, it could be as simple as an explanation as that. Um, salt, right, which is kind of like your great divide in the food, that's when you're gonna start seeing the vitamins and minerals listed. Um, and it's, you know, they're using it as a preservative. So, a little further down, what I'd like to point out is the taurine. You'll find that a lot of dog food companies, especially those that are adding legumes and nightshades to their foods, um, they're adding taurine because they're trying to circumvent what they think is happening um, by adding the peas, by adding more taurine, uh, which I personally do not feel like is the answer. Um, but again, the research is out on that, so until they figure out exactly what the problem is, I just recommend that you avoid it altogether. Um, and then we come down further in the list here, and rosemary extract. Okay, so if your dog is prone to seizures, you do not want to feed anything with rosemary or rosemary extract in it. So that's something to keep in mind if you have a dog with special needs. Um, green tea extract, spearmint extract, uh, they're completely unnecessary. Okay. They put them in dog food, um, you know, to make their breath smell better. You know, it, it's just completely unnecessary. So, um, the verdict on this wellness complete health is that I do not recommend it, right? We had too many red flag ingredients. If you're interested in learning about different ingredients and why they're good or bad, um, please join the Padfoot Palms Facebook group. All breeds, all mixes are welcome. Um, we are an all-inclusive group. Um, it's just Padfoot Palms because I happen to be a Pomeranian breeder. Um, but yeah, join the group, check out the file section, and you'll see there's a complete list there. I am constantly updating it. Um, so it has recently been updated for February of 2020. Um, but I'm constantly going in there and adding ingredients to it as pet food companies continue to get creative with what they put in pet food. If you have a food that you would like reviewed, please comment down below. 
I'm more than happy to take a look at it for you. Um, you can list a brand or if you have a specific food like this one that you would like for it to be reviewed, just comment down below and I'll make a video for you. Additionally, if you're looking for foods that have already been reviewed, make sure you subscribe to our Facebook, our, um, YouTube channel. Wow, I really need coffee. Make sure you subscribe because I make these videos um, every week, multiple times a week. And um, make sure that you check out the list in the file section of the Facebook group where I have a list of foods that have already been reviewed and approved just to try to save you guys some time. So I hope you're having a wonderful morning and we'll see you guys in the next video.